arcing. Lightning strike of arcing. Not regular lightning strike, mind you. No, 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 no. Lightning strike of arcing. That's what this character is going to try to be. If it fails, we can always go back to splitting steel or something else. But yes, we are going to do our best to make lightning strike of arcing work because I do love a good chain and lightning strike is very satisfying with its chains. And if you'd like to be satisfied too, stick around. You can check out the time codes below as we discuss gear and gems and such. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that like button. I would appreciate it. But yes, first things first as well. Welcome back, my lightning ladies and my lightning lords. The name is Wolf and this is day one of my trickster, my brand new character, because I did try some other stuff on a Pathfinder, which horribly, just horribly failed. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it. It upsets me. But yes, all roads lead back to Rome. Rome being the trickster. And there's a reason people play trickster for Valdo farmers as well. This is going to be very close to a Valdo farmer. But since I don't actually want to avoid my character, I'm able to push probably a little bit more damage. Because I do want to be able to tank some absolutely horrific and terrifying content right we are looking at possibly doing the super juiced titanic strat but maybe even bringing some delirium on top of that or maybe even pushing it into tier 17s and maybe pushing delirium on top of that some really absurd juicing for those titans those titanic titans those exiles and see what we can push out of it it's going to be really really fun maybe add some magic point there's a lot of things to consider but this very early day still day one after all so we'll discuss the gear, the gems. Maybe you can help out with some suggestions. I have a good idea of what I want and what I'm going to do, but perhaps I'm wrong. So let's discuss that and get into the thick of it all. Welcome to day one of my brand new Trickster 86. It is early days. Wolf that is approaching, if you want to follow me along on POE Ninja on the streamer section. But yes, I have played a Trickster before, a Splitting Steel Trickster, specifically last league, as you may remember. So this is a very common territory for me and it's still very very strong so i've decided to switch it up a little bit and go with lightning strike of arcing i'm gonna see if i can make this work because i do love chaining i've specced into it chaining is just really really fun it just feels very fun to watch however if it doesn't work out we do have the splitting steel ready with an awakened fork and the lightning pen we just simply switch out the gmp and the multi-strike and we should be fine we can also then drop exposure here on the glove and the additional strike for rage and spell suppress or something which would save some tattoos which is really really nice so we'll see how that turns out however let's talk about the gear itself then we'll do the gems and then we'll do the actual passive tree because there are some decisions we have to make other than do we want to play lightning strike of arcing yes we do have the ephemeral edge right here as you can see resolute technique max energy shield very nice we would prefer the of course fortify corruption as well but that's very very expensive last i checked it was basically a mirror so ouch we have a triple energy shield res int lich circlet due to the cost of like 30 percent or 29 percent quality basis i am keeping it to just a comfy 20 percent it's so much easier but as you can see the nice implicits for fizz mitigation and reduced mana cost just really really nice we are strength starved so i'm crafting attributes but I might turn that into a focus craft later if I want to switch from my chevrons ring right here with all elemental res also very, very nice into an anathema, which is what we did last time in the previous league because then we can automatically cast multiple curses and even sigil of power uh, with a simple button press, which is very, very comfy. It also gives us access to maybe spec into wicked ward, which we are currently not doing because we can't recharge energy shield or even regenerate it. So we'll see how that turns out. If it doesn't feel good, we'll switch. If it does, we'll keep it, right? We're also using an Arcane Focus Anoint on the Voice of Storm. This is pretty much your Bis amulet, especially because Lucky is just that strong. And the follow-up upgrade is like one of those super insane necklaces that are just not worth getting, honestly, unless you really have mirrors coming out of places where mirrors should not be coming out of. We do have a Nimus. The usual suspect we have an Aegis Aurora not yet corrupted I probably have to get a bunch of high rolled ones and just start running temples there's a lot of corruptions that are very good like crit reduction there's block either attack or even spell block would be really really nice 
On top of that, we have multiple hit reductions against projectiles or area of effects. It could be really, really good. I think you can even get energy shield on it. We have to look into it. But yes, we do want to get some implicits here because that's just lost value otherwise. We have a very nice necrotic armor. As you can see, triple energy shield evasion. Spell suppress, which I still have to define intelligence and attributes. This chest is cursed though because I've pushed 20 to 30 divines into trying to hit 12% physical damage from hit stake in this chaos and it just won't allow me to get there. I don't know what god I have to pray to, but bloody hell, it's, in, it's in, been absolutely frustrating to deal with. We also have the glove right here, Warlock Glove. Very nice base, keeping it at 20%. Triple Energy Shield. I know people prefer Lifesteal, increasing your damage, the Life Leech uh, craft. I, however, prefer this setup because as a Slayer, previously I walked into so many maps, so many maps, where leeching was not possible and my character just got nerfed every single time so i opted for a non-leech craft and instead get more strength because we need more strength because we're strength star so it solved that issue a little bit while also having a little bit more consistent damage and a little bit more consistent tank thank you faustus we also have a mage blood we're not corrupting this because i need the strength but it's not particularly high rolled so it is what it is we also have a warlock pair of boots this is important do not get action speed if you have specced a one step ahead. I don't know why people do that. It doesn't work. One step ahead puts you at at least 108. At least 108. So if you have less than 8% bonus, it doesn't do anything. So don't get, 10, don't get action speed if you do one step ahead, which I have done. More about that in the passive tree. Because I do like not being slowed. It's just a quality of life thing. However, if you don't have one step ahead you should definitely get action speed just be wary of that i also have some cooldown recovery because i just hit it and there hasn't been any other really good options right now unless i start working with maybe corrupted jewels that can prevent bleeding and such but who knows how that will turn out other than that we have the typical tincture this is the basic tincture every attack elemental damage build is running because it's broken as hell it's so strong we have a silver flask I'm using evasion because we're trying to buff our evasion and then turning it into armor, right? We also have some additional elemental res. I am planning to run into melding, so we'll see how that turns out. But yes, if I am not going to run melding, I will switch this into a curse reduction to become uh, curse immune, which is very, very nice. We also have increased armor because we want to have more armor. And then we also have stun immunity, which is really, really comfy. And that's pretty much it for the gear. Let's talk a little bit about the gems. As you can see, we have a Molten Shell right here, which is nice because we do have lots of armor and we are going to get even more so. We are also using a Sigil of Power, which has been a new piece of tech that I've never used before, but it came recommended, so I've been checking it out. It is nice, although I think it might even be better if you have a Focus Craft set up and then use it in your helm with the curses so you can summon the Sigil of Power whenever you want as opposed to having it trigger based on the cast when damage taken. Because the damage reduction only is active at maximum stages, and there's four max stages. So, you know, there is a, there, there's a little bit of waiting period before the DR kicks in. However, speaking of the helm, we have an enhance mark on hit sniper's mark, which makes a sniper's mark very costly, so we're adding an inspiration support. However, if you have enough mana free, you don't think it's too much of an issue, you could drop this, which might be necessary if you want to run curses with the focus craft setup, because you need to get the gem slots from somewhere. Speaking of gem slots that are open, I still have one open. I'm not sure what to do with this. People have been recommending Enduring Cry, but I don't like the idea of having to press another button, especially something like Enduring Cry that's very, very slow without having the support for Warcry speed. But alas, it is what it is. We have a Frost Blink as well as a Precision for the Watcher's Eye. Just level one. It's just there for the Watcher's Eye. Don't worry about it. If you don't have a Watcher's Eye, you could rip this out. So maybe that's the solution. Get a different Watcher's Eye, have two gem slots open. Maybe that's it. Who knows? In our six link right now, we are using multi-strike support. We want, of course, that to be an awakened one, but that's very expensive. Energy shield, uh, energy leech support. Wow. GMP, which of course we want it to be a woke version, but alas, it is very expensive. We have an awakened elemental damage, as well as a volatility support. There are so many gems I'm still leveling. I'm working on it, as you can see. It is a work in progress, however, but hopefully soon that will be done too as well as the Lightning Strike of Arcing. It's going to be quite tricky to make a 2120 Val Lightning Strike of Arcing, 
So before I start going down into the temple, I kind of want to make sure that I have locked in the lightning strike or otherwise the splitting steel, right? Hope you understand. We also have the enlightened four on a discipline purity of elements determination. I'm not sure about purity of elements yet. I could get ailment immunity through a gem and a different craft on my boot. I just have to make sure that I find a way to get my spell suppress sorted, which might be more tattoos, but then I could use theoretically haste or maybe a grace or even more armor or otherwise maybe a wrath for more damage. We have some options there. I have to kind of figure it all out. And speaking of the boots, we have more duration on a smite, Val smite specifically for that aura buff, as well as faster attacks on top of a shield charge. Now I could drop frost blink and shield charge and just put a leap slam there. That could also be uh, a powerful boon for more gem slots, but I just don't like leap slam. But maybe you do, and you could do it that way, which would help out tremendously in your socket pressure. And those are my gems, so let's discuss the passive tree. An important piece of information, once again, don't miss out on this, is if you have one step ahead, your action speed is at least 108. So if you buff your base action speed with, let's say, an implicit on the boots, it doesn't work unless it's greater than 8. Now, if you don't have one step ahead, you should definitely get action speed on your boots, all right? But yeah, a lot of people spec this or anno not anointed, a flame flesh it and then still get action speed in their boots. And it's just, it doesn't do anything. It's a wasted stat. You can get movement speed or something else useful. Other than that, though, you can also unspec this and maybe get something else. I mean, frenzy charges are pretty hot. You could save money on the flame flesh. You can do whatever your heart desires. I, however, have gotten it because I love the quality of life it gives as well as I have a flame flesh. But more about that in just a second. As you can see, it's a very typical trickster setup, very similar to my last leagues as well, although we now have this block mechanic. Normally, if you don't take this block stuff down here that everybody has been using since everybody loves shields now, you would go and pick up utmost intellect as well as wicked ward up here, which is very, very good. However, as you can see, we have picked up some tattoos, some spell suppress. We pick up every single intelligence, attack speed, and dex note we can. We have a watcher's eye down here, as you can see. I need to divine it to 8% to become spell block immune or spell block capped, I should say, but all in due time. We pick up some charisma because we do have some heavy auras. Aura increased effect as well because we have some good auras. Void barrier. We are not going to pick up the mastery because we already have a mastery of the evasion and energy shield. And of course, with Polly over here, we only get the benefit for any different type of mastery. So be wary of that. On top of that, yeah, we do have Forces of Nature with Elemental Mastery. We have picked up Multi-Shot with the Attack Mastery right here. If we were using Splitting uh, splitting Steel, we would not be using the Mastery because it's not a Strike skill. Now, you may have noticed that every node is going to give us Energy Shield. This is because of our Light of Meaning, and Energy Shield is both Tank and Damage for us, so that's very, very valuable. Speaking of things that are valuable, we also have picked up the Trick Shot, not only because there's two nodes that actually get energy shield, but also another mastery for projectile speed, which helps out. If we were using splitting steel, we would just cut all of this, obviously. On top of that, though, we have survivalist with evasion mastery. My next point is going to be the spell suppress mastery. I'm probably going to run lucky until I have cap, and then I'm going to run prevent 3% of suppressed. But other than that, yeah, you have inveterate, which is very, very good. We do pick up thrill of the battle for mana efficiency or mana reservation efficiency. On top of down, or at least not on top of here, uh, down here, we pick up some nice valuable notes, especially since they are just in range of energy shields. We're picking up Brutal Blade as well as the Mastery, which will give us access to Frenzy Charge Generation. Now, we do have many, many, many hits going out at once, so we are pretty much always at max Frenzy Charges, which is very, very good. Some travel notes right here. You want to at least pick up four tattoos of increased effect to offset the downside of what ultimately will be a max level 2120 mark on hit because if you don't do that you just lose out on a projectile if you get at least four of them and have a 2120 sniper you should or at least mark on hit you should be able to benefit from the full effect of your sniper now beyond that you can push this to 50 percent or even 100 percent for an additional one or two projectiles but all in due time we do pick up Precise Technique because we do have an accuracy rating that is higher than maximum life because we have one life and we have actual decks. So we do have the benefit of Precise Technique. 
Uh, on top of that, we have deflection right here, which is due to the fact that we need a bunch of block. We have the block mastery, which gives us spell block scaling, which is very nice. We have the keystone here to turn our evasion into armor, which is why Aegis Aurora is actually really good for this build. And then we also have the versatile combatant, which allows for more spell block scaling, which is really, really nice. And then we have Testudo. Now, it's not delightful. The, re the recovery of life on block doesn't matter, but it's a lot of block chance. And with mechanics like the block mastery and versatile combatant, we can actually get a decent amount of spell block, which we try to juice even further with the shield mastery right here to get more block that then turns into spell block. We also have one tattoo right here. If I had enough strength, I would try to find another strength note I could anoint or not anoint a uh, tattoo for another spell block, which would also give me spell block cap, but it is what it is. That's the downside of things. The top side of things, we have some clever thief action with instant leech, very potent. Gem slot for the forbidden flesh. As you can see, we have the spell breaker. The reason why we went spell breaker is because it's the most efficient because the travel node here has energy shield recharge rate and we don't actually recharge our energy shield because we are blocking that with the chevron as well as the other keystone on top that we will just take a look at. But yeah, if you do have Wicked Ward, you probably want to maybe consider traveling here naturally and maybe doing something else. Although I do not see what you would want to get. Maybe uh, you want a Flame Flesh Polymath. That's probably what I would do. Because having increased Energy Shield Recharge Rate would be really, really nice because Wicked Ward does debuff you. But we don't have Wicked Ward. And we can't recharge anyway because we have Ghost Reaver and Shamrons. We have a double block. Speaking of doubles, we have Soul Thief as well for more Energy Shield and Evasion. Some recovery as well as a mastery, so more evasion for uh, every five intelligence we have. An evasion turns into armor. Really, really nice. We also have Written in Blood. Lots of energy shield, a little bit of strength, but also more importantly, more energy shield from the helm, which is very, very valuable. Uh, and then we have Influence and Chaos Inoculation. I wonder if it might be better to drop Influence right here and maybe pick up the leader of the pack for better reservation so I can maybe get some other stuff in that might be good. Maybe there's a world where I can tech in uh, the, uh, what is it called? Flesh and Stone? The defensive aura. That would be really, really cool. But until then, we have a bunch of levels still to go. We do have a basic cluster right here. Feed the Fury, Veteran Defender. As you can see, we're not going to pick up Martial Prowess. There's also Prodigious Defense that might be nice to look into, but for now, this is pretty much what we have. And I'm going to be looking at a second cluster setup. I'm probably going to put it down here. Yeah, because it's more evasion rating. I'm going to put it down here and see how that turns out. Or maybe I'll just pick up some more wheels, because there's a lot of good stuff on the on the tree itself. So maybe we, we dance around and find out how that turns out. But yes, this is my passive tree right now. If you have any suggestions by all means pop off but yeah it's a very very similar to the last league's trickster as well as pretty similar to everybody else's trickster so it should be self-explanatory but yes first and foremost deciding on the skill and then the actual you know levels that we still have to get and see how we're going to spend them but yes thank you all so much for my day one build diary completion right here make sure to uh hit that subscribe button Check out the other videos, because the reason I'm building this character is because I want to super juice one of my farming strats that I posted in the uh, the YouTube channel itself a couple of, uh, well, not a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. So go check that out as well if you want to know why I'm doing this. But otherwise, thank you so much for hanging. I'll see you guys next time. I am out.